Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Faith Homestead Podcast. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. And thanks so much for being here with us today. So today we are going to talk about the reasons why you shouldn't keep food and water in your chicken coop. That is a big no-no. There is one exception that we're going to talk about. Again, these are our views and our opinions, what works for us. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. If you do something different, this is just what we have found works for us. But we're going to start off today and just kind of, you know, fill you guys in on what's been going on the last two weeks. Um, There's been a lot going on over here. The first one, um, we had our AC blow up. It's finally has bit the dust. It's how old was it? 25 years? Um, somewhere around, not that quite that long, but somewhere around there. Pretty old. So do you want to talk a little bit about what happened? So there was, uh, well, the compressor finally went is what we figured out. But uh, the capacitor ended up blowing up and smoking up the side of the the unit. So it was, uh, <clears throat> Sarah had asked to run the air conditioner one day. And I said, yeah, go ahead, kick it on. And a couple hours later, no, it ran for a while. Did it? Oh, okay. And then you were like... I feel like it's blowing hot air now. Oh, yeah. And I was like, um, it's not even on. What are you talking about? <laughs> so the fan was running, but no air conditioner. So we yeah. had, uh, we need to put a <clears throat> new new unit in outside. Um, Do you want to talk about first kind of what we did at first? Just because we uh, obviously know we, are, we live on this whole mindset of frugality and self-reliance and self-sufficiency. So we were not about to, you know, drop $10,000 or finance anything. So Matt decided to try to, you know, replace parts first, right? Well, yeah. So a friend of ours came over because we thought maybe a breaker had gone bad because it was throwing a breaker instantly. And it just seemed kind of weird that it was, it wouldn't reset for a moment. Mm -hmm. So a friend of ours came over and checked it and said it was okay let's check the the actual unit yeah when we took the cover off we saw all the black smoke inside <laughs> where the capacitor uh, should have not been on fire yeah. so it was um we're very lucky it was pretty evident that you know there was an issue mm. so um was able to clean it off the capacitor enough find the part number ordered one in 29 bucks figured if we could fix it for 29 bucks off we go yeah So put that on um, four or five days later whenever it came in, and it didn't fix the problem. Put a new contactor in there thinking maybe the contactor got burned up when the capacitor went. Um, Didn't correct the issue. So we ended up putting a new breaker in the box, which actually corrected the issue for a moment. Yes. So the breaker had gone bad, which Mm -hmm. is interesting. But once we turned on the breaker, it stayed on after we put a new breaker in the panel. Mm -hmm. So turned on the air conditioning. It immediately blew. It was evident that (laughs) there was something more going on. um, Thankfully, our neighbor has family members that do HVAC. So they came out and looked at it and... uh, you know, check continuity, and there was continuity in the compressor. So compressor was cooked. And, yeah. And, and we looked at a couple ways to do this. We were thinking about possibly replacing the compressor, like buying the part online. We consulted with two HVAC people, which, you know, is always really good to do when you're looking at something. Both of our friends gave us great advice. We, we just ended up going with the one that made more sense for us. Um, we ended up, um, we, our unit is also older, so it required a different type of refrigerant. That's the right word, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Different type of refrigerant. So the gentleman that came over that we knew from our neighbors was like, listen, you can do, um, this other option, which is also fine, but I can end up getting you a used unit. And I was like, what is this? This is so weird. He, Matt came in and was like, we can get a used unit for, you know, this price. And so we ended up going with that, which was, I think it was like almost $1,000 cheaper for us to do it that way versus doing all the parts, right? And all the refrigerant costs and things like that. Well, yeah. And that would have been if we could have even bought that compressor, you know, being a 20-year-old unit. So it would have been a a struggle to do without replacing the whole unit. Mm -hmm. And the issue was that our furnace and air handler is all one sealed unit in our system. So... We would have been not just replacing a central air unit. We would have been replacing air handler, furnace, everything in the yeah. house. Yeah. Just didn't want to do that right now. I think long term, 
uh, we're gonna have to eventually ideas of what i'd like to do for heating the house differently than what we're doing mm -hmm. anyway so but not wasn't quite prepared for that conversation yet so yeah and i think it's really important to note and my biggest thing was like we sat down and we were talking about all of our options and we are really, um, you know, being really uh, calculated about paying off all of our student loans in our house, which is our, our only debts that we have left. And we didn't want to drop a ton of money on a unit that was going to cost. I think it's what we were looking at was between like seven and ten thousand dollars to just replace the unit and not really do exactly what we were wanting to do long term if we stay here. Um, and so when we were we were presented with the offer to get a used unit, I I couldn't I actually really couldn't believe that was a thing, and you know I thought about it some more, and I'm thinking how often do people you know get ready to sell their house and they want to upgrade their HVAC unit for you know to make their house seem more desirable to potential buyers that they you know get rid of their current unit that's maybe you know 15 years old and they replace it with a really nice unit and if you if these technicians sometimes they'll save the refrigerant and they'll save the unit and then they'll be able to sell it. And so we did that and the unit, um, it's it's perfectly fine. It's actually a little bit um, more compact than our old unit and it works wonderful. The guy, he hooked it all up and he had like this, you know, temperature gun. He came in and was like checking all the vents and was like, this is perfect. And it's um, actually running right now. We don't really run our AC that much because again, like we try to be as frugal as possible. Um, we are really in intentional about getting out of debt and the things that we spend money on. And so we ended up just, you know, being able to just, uh, you know, cash flow this repair. Um, and it was a lot less than, you know, $10,000. So we we're super grateful for that. But, you know, that's just something to think about. There, There is always another option in most situations around, you know, you know, taking on more debt or going into debt over something. Um, but that's pretty much what's going on. Do you want to talk about a little bit real quick before we get into what we're talking about today on kind of what's going on in our garden? Yeah, stuff's growing in the garden well. Um, have the beans growing in the trellis. Um, the pumpkins started coming up through there. Yeah, we have really good soil for beans. I feel like our, we always just, they're like, a, they grew like a foot in like three days, I feel like. They did well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's really, really know. cool. So we'll have to do a garden. All of the tour. tomatoes, all the, the pepper plants, everything's doing well in the um, in the wood chips and yeah. everything like that. Today we're going to rake everything back on the seeds that we started with all those, uh, all the green beans that we yep. put in. They're ready to have it raked back in and underneath. So again, moisture retention, you know, all everything's right there for the at the root level. So yeah, and that's for the back to eating gardening that we've we've mentioned. And we I actually um, made a. A Father's Day brunch today for Matt and we um, I went to go grab some potatoes from our cold storage and I had like two boxes of like crazy sprouted potatoes like I'm talking like six inches on the eyes so I think we're gonna like just experiment with they're store-bought so we're gonna experiment and see what happens we have some extra room in our garden the um, the cattle panel has really you know saved us some some square footage so we're going to try to do that today mm -hmm. but yeah so basically real quick what we want to get into is why you shouldn't leave food and water in your chicken coop now some of these may sound obvious to you but if you really think about it you it's really important to have the chickens understand that they sleep in one place and they eat and and hang out in another place and I think a lot of people, um, you know, they just think that, oh, well, you know, the chickens, they go to bed at night and a lot of people close them in at night. Um, some people, we don't, we let our chickens just put our, they put themselves to sleep, but ch some people go outside, make sure all the chickens get back into their coop and then they shut their coop door and they think, oh, well, what if my chickens are thirsty overnight? What if they're hungry? And I thought the same thing. Um, when I first got chickens and was doing a lot of research, I was like, you know, how can they go 12 hours without having any food or water? I promise you that they are going to get up on their roosting bars and they are out. They will sit there until the, the crack of dawn in the morning when they are ready to be out in the morning. They are not going to walk around. Chickens can see um, in the dark, but it's very um, limited. So once a chicken gets up on that roosting bar, they're not going to get down again until they feel safe and that they can see. So that's just something that I wanted to let you know. So you don't feel bad um, and don't think that your chickens are going to need a ton of water and food overnight. That They get what they need. As long as you provide what they need during the day, they will be totally fine overnight. There is one exception, and I'm going to get that out of the way now. 
Um, there is one exception for keeping water and um, food in your chicken coop, and that is during the three day lockdown phase. Um, I will link that blog post in the description, but when you train your chickens to know their home, um, we recommend doing a three day, a 48 to 72 hour lockdown where you will provide food and water in their chicken coop at this point and their baby, their little chickens at this point. But if you get a new flock and they're adults, you can also do this uh, three day lock in phase. You just need to make sure that you're not doing this if you don't have adequate ventilation and adequate space for the hens that you have in this lockdown period. Um, it's really important that you have a well-ventilated coop and if you, you need to make sure that you have enough room before you're locking chickens in a, in a little box for three days. So that's just something to be mindful of. Um, but when you're training your chickens to know their home, for example, like we have our chickens in their coop, we let them out. They know exactly where to go when, the, when you know, dusk happens. They know to put themselves to bed. And if you want to have that, if you don't want to be running around trying to, you know, get Bertha out in the field and she's just not coming back to her chicken coop at night, you want to do this lockdown period where they know and they get familiar with their coop. And then when you let them out on that third day, they know where to put themselves to bed at night. And that is the only time you would leave water and uh, food in your chicken coop. So you want to talk a little bit about just a dirty sleeping environment, you know, why we wouldn't want to intermingle food and water in the coop for that reason. Yeah, I mean, you know, the old saying is don't don't poop where you eat, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's, that's uh, kind of the idea behind this. You know, they're they are putting themselves in at night. They're in there all night. They're they're not coming out to use the restroom or anything like that. It they're piles up on up. a roosting bar. Yeah, so, and it piles up. They're pooping. They poop. So, do you really want your food intermingled with and your they're feces? Jumping off the roosting bar in the morning. They're not like, oh, you know, don't go over there where we went. They're, yeah, you know, the birds. So just going to make a mess you know makes a mess of of that food and and really you know the you don't want them also spilling water and food and everything else in where they're going to be sleeping right? yeah that goes into the, number two is moisture the big dirty, problems dirty sleeping environment not real good but also yeah that moisture problem as well yeah for sure moisture in a chicken coop that um obviously you want to have a well ventilated chicken coop it doesn't matter. It's still not a good place to have moisture. It's going to breed bacteria. It can cause disease. You don't want them, you know, you don't want mold growing in your chicken coop. Um, so something that we also recommend that I ended up researching before we got our chicken coop was putting vinyl flooring down. Do you want to talk a, uh, really quick a little bit about the vinyl flooring and how like easy it is to clean it when we do it? So we put vinyl tiling down in our... Um in the coop from on the floor but also um up on the walls i forget how high i want to say two feet something mm -hmm. like that yeah um and basically the the idea was to be able to clean it easier it so, is so easy you just take the shovel it glide we use i use a snow shovel I, and i know that sounds crazy but it works so well but that snow shovel i use one of the smaller ones that you can get at, at like the dollar store for like eight bucks it just drags right across the floor and it's just the best and that's what we have like a designated like shovel for our chicken coop so that also helps you don't want um water it's water and urine you don't want it soaking into the floor or the walls of your chicken coop it just leads to growth that you don't want and disease is really prevalent among chickens and um, I can attest that this is obviously working because we have the same number of chickens that we started with. We haven't had any issues or deaths with our chickens due to any type of disease. So it's just, it's really important just to keep those things separated. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's pretty much our three reasons why we don't keep water and food in our chicken coop. And if you guys have any questions, you again, can always feel free to email us. It's info at faithhomestead.com. Do you have anything that you want to talk about today for your um, self-reliant Sunday? Anything that you've experienced this week? Well, I think that, you know, first off, it's, it's Father's Day. Yeah, so happy Father's Day. I think parenting takes some uh, resilience yeah. no matter what. It does. So uh, <clears throat> being a little bit self-reliant in, in parenting, you know, it's, it's definitely a team effort to make it all happen on a daily basis but uh you definitely have to be able to step up and and do your part in that process as well um 
and it's something that uh you know the pastor even talked about at church this morning in yeah. in that you know you kind of give up i and it becomes you know others mm-hmm. right and that's part of you know self-reliance and is is not always looking at self but looking at everybody else around you and being there being prepared being able for them yeah i think that's great and happy father's day we appreciate you so much yep thank and, you yeah and we just want to wish everybody else happy father's day we hope you guys are all having a great day and we will talk to you later bye-bye <laughs>